Well, the youngest daughter of former President JFK, John F. Kennedy, has been confirmed as the next US ambassador to Australia. Caroline Kennedy is the former ambassador to Japan and a Democratic Party power broker. And she's expected to move to Canberra in the coming weeks. Joining me now to dig into this news and much more is US commentator Kosha Garda. Kosha, great to see you. How are you? Very well, Rowan. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Well, Caroline Kennedy, Camelot all over again. Uh, she's on her way here. This is a pretty impressive pedigree to be sent to Australia, particularly, obviously, from the Democrats. But does the Kennedy name still carry the clout of Camelot, Kosher? You know, I think it does. The Kennedy name was and remains, Rowan, uh, one of the most storied names in modern American history. And so I would say net-net, um, this is probably beneficial to Australia as opposed to, for example, having a career diplomat assigned. And I would imagine that the Australian government is going to want to engage with her on a whole host of issues, defense probably being at the top of it, whether it be uh, Chinese movements in the Solomon Islands or whether it be the procurement of uh, military weapons or submarines and so, so on and so forth. I do think that she optically and from a PR perspective wields a, a lot of weight and it's, it's probably not benefit. Excellent. OK. Well, the darling or another darling of the Democrat Party, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, as she is known to her Twitter fans. Uh, plus, other Democrats seem to be making it clear, Kosher, that they're, wait for it, sick of Joe Biden. What do you make of it? Uh, she said the quiet part out loud, uh, or maybe it's not even the quiet part anymore. Look, Biden uh, is struggling, remains and continues to be struggling. His, uh, the latest poll came out, his approval rating is south of 40 percent. That is lower than what Trump's approval rating was at this point in his presidency. And so she is taking the politically expedient approach. She wants to wait for the midterms. She wants to wait and see who from the Democrat bench might emerge as a challenger or a possible front runner um, versus Biden. And, uh, you know, buckle up. It's going to be an interesting season. Can you see her putting a hand up? You know, p possibly. I think in 2024, she's just going to be over the age. So the U.S. Constitution requires you have to be 35 years old to run for president. I think she just ekes over that. Um, I, I do think, Rowan, at some point in our future, we are going to see her make a run for the presidency, whether it's in 2024 or whether she's going to bide her time or do it in the future. I don't know. But um, I, I would certainly see and expect uh, an AOC candidacy at some point in my lifetime. Well, she's been playing her cards closely to her chest, as you said, refusing to endorse Biden and saying, well, let's wait and see, let's wait and see. Hardly a ringing endorsement in his second year as president. Um, Kosher, there's been a reversal of sorts on the situation on the US border with Mexico. There is, uh, there's been a great exodus as Californians who are escaping the rising cost of living and COVID tyranny of Joe Biden and Governor Gavin Newsom head to Mexico. What's going on? You know, this mass exodus out of California has been going on, Rowan, for quite some time. Uh, in fairness to Biden, you know, well, and Gavin Newsom, well before they took their respective positions of office, but certainly amplified under their time. And it's really sad because California was this shining beacon on a hill, fifth, fourth, fifth largest economy in the world, home to the tech sector, home to Hollywood, amazing weather and all of this stuff. But between the cost of living, really bad policies, um, the increase in crime and everything else, there's been a mass exodus going now for several years running. The primary destination still tends to be Texas, Arizona, states like that, where, by the way, the, the state income tax is zero or very low, whereas in California it's as high as 12 percent. Um, but Mexico is in that mix as well. And if you think about it it's, it, it's not too hard to understand because it's apparently easy to get legal residency there. The co cost of housing is about one-tenth, 10 percent that of California. You can commute or you're a short flight away from home. Uh, the weather is great. The food's great. Not all of Mexico is sad or dangerous or overrun by cartels. So, you know, it is just a searing indictment, I think, on what's happened to this shining hill. Shining and beacon on a hill that was and California and, you also, and uh, hopefully turns around. Yeah, you also get to have your Mexican gardener and your Mexican chef and your Mexican nanny without feeling guilty about it, as they do in uh, California and elsewhere. Um, it's fascinating, Kosher, because uh, one of the problems is they they flee from these, uh, you know, these disgruntled... Um, left-wingers flee from these places like California to traditionally more conservative places, 
uh, like Florida or Texas, but they take their voting power and their politics with them, and you start to see that influencing the vote in those places. We saw a similar thing here, Kosher, with them. Um, uh, people fleeing Melbourne uh, and Victoria over the last couple of years, heading up to Queensland, and suddenly we have a massive green vote in Queensland. Anyway, finally, Kosher, I'd like to get your thoughts on this story out of Texas. The governor there, Greg Abbott, has used, has, he's ordered an investigation, rather, into allegations that a teacher brought underage students to a drag show, also attended by a convicted sex offender. What do you think about that, Kosha? Uh, it is highly inappropriate to put it charitably, um, possibly even criminal violations, because this person was underage and um, he was engaging in text messages and off-campus communication with the teacher. So, you know, we'll see where that goes, the, where the investigation leads. I think, you know, the, the bigger takeaway from this row one for everybody in the U.S. and, frankly, even here in Australia, is to really take on self-ownership and be vigilant about what is happening in institutions that historically we may have had comfort in sort of outsourcing portions of our responsibility to as parents, as citizens, uh, whether it be schools, academia at large, the church, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Hollywood filmmakers, and what have you, be very, very vigilant in understanding what their values are, what they're promoting, and whether or not it's aligned or misaligned with their own values, because you never know, you know what could happen in, in the day. And we'll see where the, this investigation leads, but it sort of really illustrates that point. Keisha Garda, th always great to talk to you. Common sense. Don't tell the Guardian they don't like common sense. That was great common sense. Great to hear from you. And uh, keep in touch and we'll speak again soon.